Yo, Stale Bills, what's the deal, man? Yo, peep game, man. Um, I, I wanna, I wanna, random question, random, random, real random. What ain't too random, it's just, I've been wanting to talk about this for some time, man. Um, How do you feel? How y'all feel a boxer would do in a in a in an octagon? How do y'all feel a boxer? Like how many times a box? How many times would you a boxer at the highest level? Depend, you know, or at any level, man. But like a boxer, a championship boxer stepping in the octagon with another with a, with a champion mixed martial artist, a contender or a prospect at any level. Just as long as they, as long as they're at the same level in their respective sports, how do you think the boxer would fare in the octagon? Because um, my coach, right? My coach is like zero because you know he um he trains a lot of the mixed martial artists up here, and they come to the gym where we're at. Well, I ain't been to the gym in months, but he comes to the gym. They come to the you know he trains. He trains, you know, he trains the MMA cats with their hands and then he comes to the gym and train, you know, and with the boxers, but he brings the mixed martial artists down here to the gym to train with us. Not to mention the mixed martial artists from that gym are really good boxers. You're talking about dudes with multiple boxing matches, man, and you know, at a high level. So how do you think they would fare in an octagon? How do you think a boxer would fare in an octagon? My coach is like zero. Um, I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Um, me personally, I think if a boxer was to get in the octagon, I think he could fare maybe three three or four times out of ten. He could, he could three to four times out of ten. And even four is a stretch. Four is a stretch, man. I mean, um, I know uh, one of the cats who comes to our gym, he's training with on, he's like all over the place now, but he's really trying to, he's really putting in the road work to go pro. But um, he, I remember he, he came to the gym, he would always come to the gym and train, and he would talk his little shit. Man, y'all boxing dudes, man, y'all don't know how to respond to nobody kicking y'all on y'all legs, all that shit. And we would just play like, you know, shadow box, like, you know, you know, little bullshit. But I remember, his name is John Kuhneman, I think, or Kuhneman, or something like that, man. Shout out to him, he's doing his thing. But I remember we bossed up one time, just on some playing shit outside of the ring. And I remember being extremely uncomfortable standing in front of this dude just because of the looks he was giving me. He was fainting with his feet, and not with the intent to, you know, faint like I'm about to close distance on you and talk, you know, so I can get a close, you know, a, 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 a hook off or nothing like that. The motherfuckers faint with their feet because they can use their motherfucking feet to strike. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is really uncomfortable. Just being in front of something like that and you're not used to, you don't have the body mechanics to deal with it, that's really uncomfortable. Extremely uncomfortable. Let alone, so I remember I had um, Houston Alexander, we was doing, and I, he had me like, it was just playing around or whatever, man, but it was a fight that he lost. He's like, no, you know, what I should have did was this. And he did something. He's like, no, you know, get on top of me. I'm like, man, that shit sound gay as well. I'm not to, you know, do stop, you know, stop playing. Just come on, I'll show you what I should have did. And I got on top of him. He rolled me over in some move. I was like, ah, that shit, like, it was just weird. It was just weird. If you ain't accustomed to being able to deal with this shit, it's like, how do you, you know? How do you how do you do? You dig like how do you persevere when your only only method you have is striking? And, you know, these are your only weapons, and you know when it comes from our sport. So when you cross over in the MMA, you got this, you got these, you got your knees, you got your feet. It's like you know how do you you know how do you find comfort in that? And not to mention like you talk to your average motherfucker, they gonna tell you all oh, MMA because you know it's martial arts. The nine times out of ten, then you know when a motherfucker say martial arts, the first thing they go to. They beeline straight to Kung Fu. They get tunnel vision straight into Kung Fu. Not even talking about, you know, Muay Thai or kickboxing or nothing like that. It's Kung Fu. And because of that, I mean, there's people who think that boxers can't beat people who do, like, 
all the old Asiatic style, you know, combative forms of fighting. I'm only saying Asiatic for the sake of conversation. We all know where martial arts comes from originally, but that's a different story. But like the thing is, martial arts in um martial arts in the black community is uh it, it, it's been um it's been perceived as just this this unfuckable combat form of fight because just the dramatization that goes on in the movies the real fancy choreography the tumbling when you take it back to the 80s niggas is fighting in midair they jump into the top of trees they break in five or six blocks of ice on fire they do a lot of theatrics in the movies and shit but because we grew up watching it we think that this is the ultimate form of fighting. This is the ultimate form of fighting. I mean, um, just it, it, like Black America. I heard a theory before that Black America saved the movie industry business, as far you know, because they were about to shut theaters down all over the country, and I think that's when you've seen a surge in Black exploitation of Black exploitation films. At martial arts films like the kung fu flicks you've seen that you've seen a surge and a boom of that because it was a specific demographic of people that was going to watch these movies in the theater especially you know black exploitation the black exploitation films it's dope to see his shit man who don't want to watch motherfucking uh a uh, 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 superfly when he beats the cia and spook who sat by the door you're gonna go see that but then you know it's also like we want to you know we fight and that's when you, you know, around the 70s, you started seeing a lot of dojos and everything pop up in a, you know, in a, in a, and you started seeing a, you know, a surge of black people take martial arts classes. So we cater to that. And that's allegedly, you know, allegedly it's a theory that we are the ones who save the movie theaters. I don't know how accurate it is, but it is a theory that I've heard. But what I do know is we have an affinity towards martial arts flicks, man. You go to any, any old head's house, gonna see a ple you know you're gonna have a plethora of dvds you know back when dvds was the thing or you know even cassette tapes on you know on the vcr you're gonna have a plethora of these movies in a special spot on the dvd rack there's gonna be a whole bunch of them on like on the dvd rack like this is my special space right here for these particular movies so because of that people have come to this mindset that Martial arts in any form, just because a nigga use it, just because a motherfucker use their feet, is just unfuckable. Like a boxer wouldn't be able to know how to do anything with that, man. When it all actually out, like there's plenty of footage on YouTube of boxers stepping in the ring and going and facing off with cats who are practitioners in these Asiatic forms of fighting. And it, it's chaotic unless you're talking like Muay Thai or Kyoto shit, which translated into kickboxing. But the styles, you know, karate and kung fu and shotokan, like all that shit, bro, that shit gets shut down, honestly. That shit gets shut down. Like they don't have a, you know, it's no, it's no sufficient defensive system in place for these styles. For those styles. But the, you know, motherfuckers really just because they use their feet and a boxer is only subjected to his hands that the boxer just innately loses. And that's just not the case. That's that's just that's not true. It's, it's not true. It's not true whatsoever. It's not true. I mean, Bruce Lee. We you know we love. I love Bruce. You dig? I grew up on Bruce. And I think if Bruce would have lived to get into the uh, the ultimate fight, not uh, 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 well, what did they, I forget? The pride fighting and everything when that shit started to explode in around about the nineties. I think he would have loved to be around for that. I, I think he would have. He was already training to really break the barriers and blur the lines of Wing Chun. That's what Jeet Kune Do was about. But the thing is, he died three years into the inception of that ideology. So he didn't really get to he didn't really get to come into fruition to the capacity in which he wanted it to. He was on the right path, but just at the level he was at, I told somebody, if you put Bruce Lee in a ring, like people really be like, I don't know who went between him and Mike Tyson. And that shit, I, I remember just being like living, because I was one of them dudes back in the day who thought Bruce, no man ever walking the planet would have been able to do anything with Bruce. That's a lie. I love Bruce. And I think later in life, he most definitely would have became what it is 
somewhat of the legend that we hold him to. I think he would have became that somewhat. He would have became that somewhat. But motherfuckers is telling me that a dude who's three inches taller than him outweighs him by a hundred plus pounds and has and is highly skilled in a style where it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a really effective offensive system and a really effective defensive system that he would he might still lose to Bruce Lee. Like Bruce Lee wasn't getting, you know, ragdolled by Gene LeBeau. And you know, and, and grappling. So just people, just the minute you say martial arts and they have, you know, their ability to use their feet, they just really jump out the window with shit and like, oh man, you know, if I, you know, he uses feet, so you automatically lose. And I'm like, no, nigga, hell no. What the fuck is you talking about? I had a dude tell me also that a football player would beat the shit out of a boxer because he, you know, his ability to tackle. And I'm like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Football players try to go through their opponent. You know, it's a difference between tackling from a football standpoint and a takedown standpoint from MMA. If a motherfucker is taking you down in MMA, it's usually to get on top of you, to ground, you know, mount you and uh, ground and pound you, or to lock you into a submission hold. This is that's what that is. That's all that is. Come on, my nigga, you're getting a little too close. Football, a nigga is trying to run through you. It is not the same. It's not the same. So I mean, people. Just, I, I've come up. I've had weird conversations with people. Just really disrespect the ability to, of striking with your hands in boxing, in pure boxing. I, I think that's kind of ridiculous, man. I think that I think that's rather ridiculous because I'm watching people like I'm watching people. While I, I'm like, yo, what do you? I don't see how a motherfucker like. Like karate and kung fu and shit like that. I'm watching some shit. You know, it's a dude, Master Wong, on YouTube and everything. He makes the most absurd demonstration videos, and there's people who run to this man's page and just. And I, I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. And people really hang on to these to these theories as if it's based in truth. And I'm just sitting here like, man, my head is hurting watching this shit. My head is hurting because it's still it's people who really believe that a human being has the capabilities to break a block of five or six blocks of ice in a row with his palm. This is the mindset of people who follow the, you know, like Kung Fu and shit like that. It's just really weird, man. So boxing continues to get denigrated because, you know, the only thing we use is our hands and Martial artists get the praise or whatever because they use, you know, they, you know, they use all, they, they, use, they weaponize their entire body. They weaponize their entire body. Even though you, I mean, you see this Asian dude, I don't know, somewhere in China, he's a mixed martial artist. He's going to different dojos, challenging um, masters in the, you know, and master practitioners in martial arts, and he's eradicating these dudes in a matter of seconds. So I, I don't know, man. It's just, it, it bothers me, man. So you know, as far I don't think unless you're unless you're doing a style like Kyokushin, which trans you know which translates into kickboxing and and, Muay, and, and then Muay Thai, I don't think a, a, a style. I don't think there's a kung fu style, you know, um, in existence that would be able to deal with a boxer. I mean, even when you watch the movies, when they go through all the, the animal style, the tiger style, and all that shit, you can't hurt any, unless you lock onto somebody in a fight, you lock onto them and you're just scratching, and this is your only tool of, 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 of an attack, as opposed to somebody hitting you with bone and knuckle. How is that logic? Like, how does that make sense, you dig? That just doesn't make much sense. It's kind of, it's rather ridiculous. It's rather ridiculous. So I, I'm just like, I don't know, man. Um, 
Krav Maga, I don't, I'm not so sure of. Salat, I think those are pretty legitimate styles. But like the styles that are based on, you know, the, you know, the movies and shit from the from the '80s and shit. If you step in a ring or any in the street with any of them, you know, Tai Chi motherfuckers, you know, there's people who think this movie's predicated on Tai Chi. And Tai Chi isn't even a combat, combative form of, it's just about channeling your energy. But we just so lost with this shit, it's, just, it's like, yo, are you serious right now? Like, you know, it's real beautiful movement, man. It, it's, it's real fluid and elegant movement and just real, just artistic and fluid. It, it's just really dope to watch. But when it's time to get in the, you know, when it's time to get in and mix with niggas, it, you could possibly beat somebody in the street with that. Who don't necessarily possess the body mechanics to get out of the way of a shot. For somebody who knows how to get out of the way of the shot and maintain distance to where this shit isn't gonna work, or if this shit isn't gonna work, nah, it's a wrap. So as far as martial arts, nah, bro. Like, the traditional martial arts, you know, styles of martial arts that we know, nah. MMA is a different story, though. Because it's, I mean, it, it, it's weird, you know, someone shooting at your legs, how do you, you know, you're not used to that. You're not used to somebody shooting at your legs and taking you down. With the, with, you know, with the intentions of tapping you out or, and if you're not tapping, if you don't tap out, I'm gonna just put you to sleep. If you don't tap out, I'm gonna break your leg. If you don't take, if you don't tap out, I'm going to snap your arm out of the socket. That's a different story. That's a different story. You, you dig me? That's a, that's a different story. But even then, yeah, one legacy cross me. But even then, you still have to take into consideration somebody's hands. You have to get through somebody's hands to get to their, you know, to get to, you know, to get to their body. You have to. You have to get through somebody's hands. You have to find a way to neutralize somebody's ability to get a shot off. We only going. We will only step into the octagon with just these. And there's no other affluent striking system with the hands than boxing. Boxers are, you know, they're a little bit more. They're more accurate with their punches. They punch harder. They're more craftier with the way they set up the shot. They're like, you know, they they're they're more clever with the feints. There's a lot of things you have to worry about with a boxer talking you know two cats at their best or just you know coming up i personally still would edge a, a mixed martial like i said man um i would have a mixed martial artist winning at least at, at the very least five out of ten at the very least and i didn't nah six seven out of ten But I do think boxers could win three or four out of ten. I, I do. I, I genuinely do. I genuinely do. It's, 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 it's just kicking. I remember the same dude, the John, the dude, the John dude I was just telling y'all about in the video, you know, in the um, early in the video. I remember um, he came to the gym. I don't know if it was that same day, but even my coach had to tell him, Leave my fighters alone. Like, leave them, you know, we 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 getting ready to spar. You dig? You up here doing yada 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 yada. But he was trying to teach me how to kick, and I was absolutely clueless on how to do it. Like, it's not for me. It's not for me. I was trying to kick this goddamn bag, and I I can't do it. I can't do it. So they have all of that at their disposal that they can use against you. And all you have is these. So it's a lot of different paradigms. You did. Like I, I do think a boxer could go in there and find a way to get off first. I most definitely do think that. I most definitely do think that. Especially if someone is just coming in there with the intent to shoot at your legs. I think you can find a way to maintain distance. You put a jab in their face. You can find a you can find a way to maintain distance and, and operate from that. Most definitely can. There's, there's even mixed martial artists who have said that somebody, a boxer with a very good jab, could win, could have very big success in MMA. 
I tend to agree with that. I just don't think the level of success would be as high of another practitioner of, of mixed martial arts. I just don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, yeah, man, it, I, I, I would like to know what y'all think on that, man. Um, and that's another, you gotta, I mean, boxers are trained, to, you know, depending on what level you're at as, as a pro, they're trained at the very least six rounds, four rounds or whatever, man. You gotta think MMA, them dudes, they fight five rounds. And if someone shoots at your legs and you're fighting off of your back, now your boxing mechanics, even though, even on your back, you still possess the ability to slip and move your head and, you know, catch shots and, you know, not completely cover your face up so you can't see the shots coming. You, you know, you can still take that, you know, that capability into, a, into an octagon and you would still have somewhat some success even if you found yourself in a position where they're mounting you and they're, you know, it's ground and pound. But you're not used to doing it from that position. So what happens if the refs breaks y'all up and he tells y'all, all right, now get back up. You're gonna be gassed. Like super gassed and your legs are gonna be shot. It's like, yo, I'm not, it's just a completely different workout. And them dudes train, them dudes, them, them girls and them dudes, they train for situations like that. Fighting just, you know, rolling. Jiu-Jitsu, you dig? Just rolling around, grappling with motherfuckers. You, just, you gotta think, man, the highest level, you doing that shit for 25 minutes, man. Five, two, five, five minute rounds? Bro, that's exhausting. So all in all, I do think a boxer could go in the octagon and have success, but not to the degree that it's just gonna be just... I don't think he'd have as much success as he would uh, as another practitioner of MMA. I don't. I absolutely don't think that, man. Because it's just too much to worry about. But I do think that they could have success nonetheless. So, that's how I'm feeling about that shit, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. I, I, I'm, I'm real. I'm real interested in what motherfuckers got to think about. I got to say about this. I really would like to know because uh, I've had countless conversations like this, and people keep, you know, I, I don't know, man. Just, 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 I don't know, man. Just let me know what the fuck y'all think. Let me know if I'm burnt the fuck out, if I'm lying, and I ain't keeping it real. But um, I'm pulling up to my goddamn job site right now, ready to get this Friday over with, man. So. Y'all holler back at me when y'all can, man. Peace.